Zhang Sheng. Zhang Qingyu is a famous scholar from Liaodong. I came to Jinan province for taking the country trials. I heard that there is a Taoist at the Fanwang mansion who can foresee the misfortune of others and is eager to see. After two exams, he came to Botuquan, where he happened to meet a Taoist priest. The Taoist priest, who looked in his 60s, had a long beard that floated below his chest and was a silver-haired Taoist priest. People who gather around the Taoist army to question the murder are surrounded like walls. The priest censored them with a few simple words. The Taoist priest, who saw Mr. Zhang among the crowd, shook hands with him with delight and said, your heart is respectable. When he was done, he walked up to the attic with the arm of the clock in his arm and avoided anyone else, asking, don't you want to know what your future holds? Zhang Qingyu said, yes, your life is too short, but there is hope in this course of action, Dao Shi said. But I'm afraid that you won't be able to see your mother once you're back. Mr. Chang, a filial son, burst into tears when he heard the Taoist monk. I don't want to go back to my hometown. If you miss this exam, you won't get this chance, Dao Shi said. When my mother is dying, how can I behave in the future? Even if you are a minister, the Taoist said, I've been with you in the past, and I'm doing everything I can to help you now. When you're done, you take one pill and give it to Mr. Zhang, saying, you can send one person home overnight and take this pill to your mother for seven days. You'll see your mother and son when you get back to examine A. Mr. Zhang hid the pills and hurried away from the Taoist monk, despondent. My mind thought that my mother's life was short. If I came home a day early, I could support my mother for another day. I laid down a donkey with my servant and returned home immediately. The donkey was driven for more than a mile, turning his head and running backwards. The servant takes the lead. He does not tame. He takes the cage. He just takes the broom. Zhang Sheng was at a loss, and he sweated like a fish. The servant persuaded him to stop first, but Mr. Zhang refused. Another donkey. And the same thing happened. I don't know what to do when the sun goes down. The servant persuaded. Why fight for this morning and night when the examination is finished tomorrow? Please let me go back first. It's okay. Mr. Zhang had to obey his servant. The next day, Mr. Zhang left immediately after a scrawling examination, dwelling on food and sleep and returning with a full moon. When I got home, I heard that my mother was in critical condition and was taking Danan medicine from a guru. She gradually recovered. Mr. Zhang entered his mother's room, saw her and burst into tears at the bedside. Shaking his head, her mother did not let Mr. Zhang cry and held his hand in delight. I just dreamed that I would see the king of death in the shade and look very gentle and say, no great evil has been committed in looking at your life. Your son, who now cries to you, is filial and gives you another 12 years of your life. Mr. Zhang was pleased to hear. A few days later, my mother's illness was completely resolved. After a few days, Zhang Sheng left his mother and came to Jinan province after hearing the news that he had passed the examination. At the Fan Wang residence, I gave a gift to the internal affairs officer, who will pay tribute to the emperor. The Taoist priest was happy to come out, and Mr. Zhang knelt down to count out to him. You raised a man in the exam. Your wife raised her life count, Dao Shi said. These are your own retribution for your great virtue. How can the Shandao have the power of heaven? Mr. Zhang, surprised by his prophet, asked the Taoist for his life's blessing. You don't have much wealth, Taoist said. Just to live to be 89 is enough. Your predecessor, a fellow monk, killed a frog by beating a dog with a stone, and the frog was born as a donkey. According to my predecessor, you should have died young by accident. Now that you've touched the gods with your filial piety, there's a star in your destiny, so there's no danger. But your wife, who was born unfaithful, was destined to be a widow. Today, you live longer because of virtue. She'll be no longer your wife. I'm afraid your wife will be dead in a year. Mr. Zhang, grieving for a long time, asked where his wife was. Dao Shi said, in Hunan, it's 14. When he broke up, the Taoist priest ordered him to flee to the southeast in case of future distress. A year later, his wife died. 
Mr. Zhang's uncle was ordered by his mother to visit him in a county in Xijiang. Passing through Hunan to check on the marriage's prophecy. By chance, I was in a village, and I was playing by the river, and men and women were together. Mr. Chung tried to drive the mule over quickly, and a rootless donkey followed him, provoking the mule's old howl. Mr. Zhang looked back and whipped the donkey's ear. The donkey ran scared. It happened that a prince, only six or seven, was cradling on the river embankment as his nanny rushed over with a donkey. The waiter had no time to take care of him and squeezed him into the river. The crowd shouted, trying to rest Mr. Zhang. Mr. Zhang let go of the mule and ran as fast as he could, remembering the Taoist monk and rushing southeast. About 30 miles away, in a mountain village, an old man stood by the door and bells gave birth to a mule. The old man invited him inside and said, surname Feng. Ask Mr. Zhang where he came from. Mr. Zhang kotos and tells the truth about what happened. The old man said, maybe please stay here for a while. I'll send someone to check on the news. At night, when we got word, we knew it was the little prince who was frightened. The old man said horribly, I can't help you with anything else. I can't help you with this. Zhang Sheng begged incessantly. The old man plotted and said, There's no other way, please stay here for one night. Listen to the emergency. We'll make plans. The bell was terrified and didn't sleep a night. The next day, the old man sent out to find out what had happened. He heard that the government had written to track down the fugitives. Whoever hides a fugitive, kills his head, the old man is in a lot of trouble. He goes in quietly, Mr. Chung is paranoid, scared, terrified. In the middle of the night, the old man came in and said, How old is the wife? Zhang Sheng told her widower. The old man said happily, I've got a plan. When Mr. Zhang asked him, the old man replied, My brother-in-law admired Buddha, came from a family in Nanshan and died again. How about having a little girl and living with me? who's smart enough to marry her to you. Zhang Sheng, delighted to be in line with the prophecy of Taoist monk and with his kinship, could be rescued. He said, it is a great honor for a small student. However, I am afraid that I, a sinner from afar, have suffered a terrible death. It's for you. My brother-in-law has a lot of skills, but he hasn't been around for a long time, he says. After you get married, you plan with my niece and beg him for help. Mr. Zhang was delighted to be the son-in-law of the old man's niece. She's only 16 years old. She's beautiful. Mr. Zhang often laments his regret. The girl said, I'm not too pretty to be hated by you so soon, though. Zhang apologized, saying, It's a blessing that I can match you as a cactus-like woman. But I am in trouble and very worried that good things will turn into bad things. Tell the girl the truth. The girl complained. Uncle's doing it. It's not touching. This is a big disaster. I can't help it. I didn't tell you before. It's not like I'm in a trap. I begged my uncle so desperately that he could not help but know you could come back to life, mister. Zhang said on his knees, I'm not a good husband, but I don't mean to be without you. If I have a day of my life to support you sincerely, it's a day to come. The woman sighs. What can I say when this is the case? But since my father's birth, my son and daughter have stopped loving each other. There is no other way to beg him with you. And I fear some frustration and humiliation. So the two slept through the night, tucked their knees in their clothes with felt, and then called for a sedan, which traveled more than a dozen miles into the South Hills. The mountains are so tangled that we can no longer ride the sedan. After getting out of the car, the girl had a hard time walking. Mr. Zhang shoved her on his arm and wrestled countless times before climbing. Not far away, I saw the mountain gate of the monastery, and he and I sat down for a little rest. The girl was gasping, sweating and the powder dripping down her face. Mr. Zhang met him and was intolerant, saying, for my sake, make you suffer this way. I'm afraid that's not better, the woman said, with a grim expression. A little weary, the two men leaned into each other's temples, saluted the Buddha and walked inside. Wandering into the Zen room, an elderly monk sat cross-legged, his eyes closed as a child waited for him. The abbot room was clean and tidy, and the monk's seats were covered in gravel and dense with stars. The girl didn't dare to choose a place and knelt on it when she came in. 
Mr. Zhang also knelt in the back. The monk opened his eyes and closed it again. She said, I've been visiting my father for a long time. Today, my daughter is married. I've come to see you with my son-in-law. The monk stayed for a long time before opening his eyes and saying, You're so tiring. You need go. I stopped talking. The couple kneeled for a long time, exhausted, and the sand and stones were about to crush into their bones. After a while, the monk said, Have you brought the mule? The woman said, No, the monk said, Your husband and wife will return immediately, but bring the mule quickly. The couple kotoed and walked out of the temple in disarray. Back home, follow his father's advice and send the mule to the temple. But without knowing it, he just hides at home and hears the wind outside. A few days later, the rumor was that the convict had been caught, bound to the execution ground and beheaded. The couple knew each other was happy. Soon after, a child was sent to hand over a severed crutch to Mr. Zhang, saying, This gentleman is the one who was slashed instead of you. He told Zhang Sheng to bury the crutches and pay respects to the sacred ground so as to solve the grievance of Zhu Mu's death. Mr. Chang, look where it's been cut. There's blood marks. After Mr. Zhang prayed, he buried his crutches. Afraid to live here for long, the couple left Zhangzhou overnight and returned to Liaoyang. All right, this story has come to an end. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.